Hi, I'm Heather and I'd like to go over seatbelt systems. Seatbelt systems are important because you have to know how to use seatbelts in order to install your car seat. Seatbelts are very important. Not only do they restrain you in a vehicle, but they restrain your car seat after a certain weight limit if you're using latch. And it's important because if you don't know how to lock your seatbelt, your car seat is not going to be installed properly. So let's go over some basic terminology. First, this is the webbing. The webbing is the fabric portion of the seatbelt. That's pretty easy. Next is the latch plate. The latch plate is the metal tongue that gets buckled into the buckle. So you put the latch plate into the buckle. The buckle is the portion that has the red button that you press and it releases the latch plate. The retractor is the portion that spools back all of this webbing. So the retractor is often found in a wall or a pillar. The pillars are found on the side, so we have a B pillar between the front seat and the back seat. That's your B pillar. This would be a C pillar right here. You can also find a retractor inside a vehicle seat, like this center seat right here has the retractor built inside. And you can find a retractor even in, say, the floor of the vehicle, in some vans or some SUVs that you'll see them in floors. And sometimes even you'll see some seatbelt systems that have dual retractors. So you'll have a retractor up at the top and a retractor at the bottom. So seatbelts come in all sorts of varieties. The most common variety that you're going to find is called the switchable retractor. And that's in gosh, I'd say about 90 to 95% of vehicles on the road today. It is, in modern vehicles, really the most popular that you're going to see. So let's go over what a switchable retractor is and why it's important to you. In everyday driving, switchable retractors are in what we call the emergency locking retractor mode, so ELR mode. In your vehicle manual, I want you to crack open your vehicle manual at some point today, and in your vehicle manual, it'll say ELR mode. And what that means is just as you drive, if you go around a corner too fast or if you slam on your brakes, it's gonna grab onto you and pull your seatbelt tight and lock. So something like that. Now, in some cars, if you try and yank on your belt like that, it's not gonna lock. And you're gonna go, my seatbelt's broken. Well, there are two different types of ELR retractors. There's a webbing sensitive ELR retractor, which is like this. So when you grab on it and pull like that, it's gonna lock. And then there's a vehicle sensitive retractor. So the vehicle sensitive retractor, if you try and yank on it like this, it's not gonna lock. It only locks when you slam on the brakes or when the vehicle senses that there's a change in momentum. So that's a vehicle sensitive. So it doesn't mean that your seatbelt is broken. It just has to have, the vehicle has to change. And some retractors actually have both types. So you may try and try and try and yank on your seatbelt. It may not stop. And somebody else in your family or a friend may come up and yank on your seatbelt and it'll lock. So it just depends. Don't worry about your retractors. Chances are they're not broken. So that's an ELR retractor. It just means that you have to be careful if you're testing them for seat belts that you don't yank on your seat belt. So you can see that this seat belt probably has both types of ELR retractor because I'm kind of yanking on it and sometimes it locks and sometimes it doesn't. To switch it over so that it's permanently locked, we pull the seat belt out all the way to the very end. And as you can see, this seat belt has a lot of webbing. It's a very long seat belt. So now that I'm at the very end, when I let it go back in, do you hear that clicking? I've now switched it over to the locked mode. Or in your owner's manual, sometimes it'll say ALR, which means automatic locking retractor. And that's what we want to use when we're locking our retractor for, for our car seats. So as you can see, no matter what I do, I can't pull it back out. It's locked and it's gonna stay that way all the time until I let it go all the way back in. And it'll hit a certain point right there. 
where it unlocks. So ALR mode is for car seats. Think of it as car seat mode. Okay, so automatic locking retractor. Okay, so that's your switchable retractor. So pull it all the way out slowly because if we yank on it, <laughs> and now it's not going to do it. If we yank on it, it might lock, and we, we think it's locked, but it's not. Okay, so we pull it all the way out slowly till the very end, and then let it go back in. Once we hear that clicking, we know it's locked. Now we need to be careful because we might not always hear that clicking sound. We may be in a noisy environment, and some retractors really are abs actually very quiet. So we need to be careful with that, that we don't absolutely trust our hearing on the clicking. Make sure that as you let it go back in, test it, pull it out, let it go back in again a few inches, and try and pull it out again. That's how you do the true test of the ALR mode or the automatic locking retractor mode. And that is switchable. Why do we need it locked like that? Let me show you. Let me actually put a car seat in. So let's use that switchable retractor in installing a car seat. Here's a forward-facing car seat. It's probably in being installed for a child who's over the weight limit for latch. So we need to use that seat belt. All right, so we locked our seatbelt and the car seat is nice and tight now. Now all that's left is to attach the top tether. This is a cinching latch plate. It's also called a lightweight locking latch plate. It's simply a locking latch plate. It looks normal on the front, like a sliding latch plate. If you turn it over, however, you'll notice that there's a moving piece just like this and that's what cinches down onto the seatbelt. When the two pieces of webbing are parallel to each other like that, that is when that moving piece locks down onto the webbing and keeps it tight. So when I buckle it in like this and pull up on the webbing, you can see that it's staying tight and that's the test for a cinching latch plate like this. The cinching latch plate is found in Chrysler vehicles, some older Jeeps, mostly Chrysler, some older Dodges. They're not found too much anymore and they're typically found in the center seating position like this particular position. So check your owner's manual to see where they're found in your car if you have a Chrysler or Dodge vehicle. This is a lap only seatbelt. It provides two points of protection, one on each hip, and it works by keeping the two pieces of webbing in line parallel to each other like this. So you can see that it's, if I keep the pieces together like this, it's not pulling loose. If I tilt the latch plate like this, it pulls loose very easily. That's because there's a bar on the underside of the latch plate, and when the bar is loose like this, it can pull that webbing freely through. When the two pieces of webbing are parallel like this, that bar clamps down on the webbing. To test whether this seat belt is working, you can obviously 
hold it like this and pull or buckle it in then pull up on the webbing like this. This is a dynamic latch plate. It looks like a typical latch plate except it's different on the back. It looks like it has moving pieces and when you buckle it in it feels like it has tension on the lap portion of the belt. So when you feel it around your lap portion and you try and pull up on it, perhaps in your vehicle if you have these in the front seat, you won't be able to lift any of it. If I were to buckle it in in this vehicle, it does move some, but I have to actually put a little bit of oomph on it. I have to use some muscle to get it to move, but it does still move like this. Whereas if I were to sit in the back seat, I could move the lap portion of the belt quite freely. The reason behind using a dynamic latch plate is that it helps with the crash standards. In about 2011, crash standards changed. In order to uh, update seat belts to help the smaller crash test dummy, which is the 105 pound female dummy, improve on the crash tests for the passenger side. Uh, GM came up with what they call the dynamic latch plate, or you might have heard it called the dynamic locking latch plate. It doesn't really lock, so that's why we've kind of had the shift in the terminology on it to dynamic latch plate. And what it does is it, it just puts some a lot of friction on the lap portion of the belt, which helps prevent that smaller dummy or the smaller female from submarining or going underneath the lap belt, which improves the crash test. Um, it improves the chest deflection scores on the crash test. It's actually a, a great improvement. And what they're doing now is they're putting this particular latch plate in the back seat of some vehicles now. So you might see it in the back seat of some trucks. I've seen it in some trucks and it's also in some cars. It's not a true locking latch plate, so if you don't have a locking latch plate, think about how you're going to lock your seatbelt. If you don't have a locking latch plate, the seatbelt has to lock someplace. So if it's not at the latch plate, it's going to be at the retractor. You have a switchable retractor. So remember how to switch over your switchable retractor. You pull it out, all the way very slowly till the end and you can't pull it out anymore and then I hear that click which is a signal to me that the retractor has switched over I'm also letting it retract a little bit and then pulling out some more and I know it's locked because it's not letting me pull out anymore I let it retract a little bit more try and pull some out, it's not letting me pull out anymore, so I know it's locked. And there we go. That is the dynamic locking latch plate, or the dynamic latch plate. Have you seen this type of seatbelt before? Maybe you have it in your own car. The seat belt comes down from the ceiling and becomes a lap shoulder belt, a three-point seat belt. So just remove it from its storage spot and it comes down like this. This seat belt has two latch plates and this even has a label which shows you how to connect it. This smaller latch plate goes into this buckle right here, like so. And that's how we connect it to get the lap shoulder belt. It can be used now to install car seats or for booster riders or for regular adult riders, as long as we lift up the headrest. To unbuckle it and put it back into a storage spot, there is a slot right here on the back side of this buckle, and you can fit this latch plate in here if you don't want to do that, or if for some reason that latch plate doesn't fit, you can use your key or a similarly sized object and just poke it into that slot. I'll use the latch plate to show you. Just like this, poke it in there, it releases it. Then make sure it's not twisted. 
it goes back up into its slot and it's nice and safe. You may have noticed something on this seatbelt right here. It looks like a buckle, but it's not. It's a seatbelt pretensioner. During a crash sequence, the pretensioner fires. There's a little chamber down here and it fires and tightens the seatbelt on you. That allows the seatbelt to hold you back and protect you a little bit better during the crash. The seatbelt pretensioner is an important part of safety. They've done studies on this and shown that they're very helpful during the crash sequence in reducing injuries. Another portion of the seatbelt that you might not see is also called a load limiter. A load limiter, because this fires, it's not on all seatbelts, but the load limiter will, once the seatbelt has a certain amount of tension on it, the load limiter will loosen the seatbelt just a bit so that you're not held back too tightly and cause further injuries because you might think, oh, well, the seatbelt is being pulled too tightly on me. It could be. So the load limiter limits the amount of load on you and might potentially reduce those injuries. So they work in conjunction. But again, not every seatbelt with a pretensioner has a load limiter. Some pretensioners are now found in the back seat. So that's something that you can look for when you're shopping for new cars. It's a very important safety feature.